In this video, I'll share a number of strategies to help you stay focused and efficient in the middle of a lot of distractions. Hi, I'm Lisa, and I help business owners reduce their work week by at least 10 hours every week without having to work harder or be more disciplined. The life of a business owner is certainly fast paced. And with that fast pace comes distractions. It is completely realistic to think that you will be distracted or interrupted multiple times every day. Every day, are you kidding me? Every hour. When you can start to figure out how to minimize those distractions, I would love to say eliminate the distractions, but that is not realistic. But when you can figure out how to minimize the distractions, then you are able to be more effective and more efficient. Let's talk about what those distractions look like. Typically with my clients, I find that distractions fall into three categories. There are interruptions from people, thoughts in your own head, so your own distractions. And then finally, tech, email, Slack, etc. In this video, I'll show you some strategies to help limit the impact of all three of those types of distractions. Let's talk about the distractions in your own head. This is by far the one I struggle the most with. And what I have found that's helpful is a parking lot. So it is not uncommon that I will be working on writing a blog post and I'll have a very unrelated thought pop into my head, which I then will want to open up another browser and then another browser, and then another browser. And I'll go down that rabbit hole and I'll totally forget what I was doing in the first place. Instead now, what I do is I use a parking lot. It's just a sheet of paper where I jot down whatever is coming in my head. Instead of acting on it, I just jot it down so I can park it, put it somewhere to act on later. This is also a great strategy when you're in a meeting and especially if you're in the beginning parts of a brainstorming and you're brainstorming on one topic, but then an idea leads to something else, which leads to a completely different topic, go ahead and put those in a parking lot to come back to later. Here's one important thing about the parking lot. It is not your next to-do list. It is just a place to park the ideas out of your head until you can come back to them later. Another common distraction that business owners face our people. I'm going to give you a couple examples of how this can look, and then we'll talk about some strategies around them. It takes up to 23 minutes and 15 seconds to re-enter the zone. So when you're working on something, you're in the zone and someone interrupts you, it takes you almost 25 minutes to get back to that place where you were in the zone. So no wonder it's so hard to get things done when people are constantly coming in and asking you, hey, do you have a minute? Because it's never just a minute. Even if it were a minute, it's already a minute plus the 23 minutes to get back to what you're doing. So here are some ideas um, and strategies that some of my clients have put into place to help minimize the interruptions happening from other people. If you or some of your employees are in an open workspace, it's important to know when people are and are not available for conversation. Like part of the reason there's an open workspace is for collaboration. Yet, if all we ever do is collaborate, we don't get any work done. <laughs> so we need to understand and respect the boundaries for people when they're trying to work versus when they're trying to talk. So come up with some sort of a, a signal. Um, one of my clients, they actually have noise canceling headphones. When the headphones are on, do not interrupt them. When they're off, they're open for conversation. Another client has like a little fidget toys. If the fidget toy is sitting on top of the monitor, that means that they are open to talk to people. If the fidget toy is off the monitor, that means that they are diligently working. Please respect that space and come back later. Another one of my clients is an accountant, and she found that in the course of an hour, she could be interrupted four to seven times from employees having questions and needing her input on things. She now has open office hours, an hour in the morning, an hour in the afternoon, and it allows time for her employees to stop in, ask her questions or contact her, you know, via Slack or, or whatever the case may be so that she can answer their questions and then work uninterrupted the rest of the day. Because remember 23 minutes and 15 seconds, every time you're interrupted to get back to what you're doing. Similarly, I have a client who works in the mergers and acquisition space, and he sets up 15 minute meetings with key people on his staff every week. This way they collect all the questions they have for him and then they sit down and they just go through them one by one. 
One of the advantages of doing this um, for a short amount of time and only once a week is that it encourages some of his key staff to actually try to research answers on their own, which makes them much more valuable and much more effective and much more efficient when they can troubleshoot and problem solve themselves. Even when you use strategies to help minimize the amount of interruptions that you're getting from people each day, it still can be difficult. <laughs> Sometimes you still are going to get interrupted. It's a fact and that's okay. What you can do to help lessen that 23 minutes and 15 seconds that it takes to get back into the zone, let's take a sticky note and pop it right on top of whatever you were working on with whatever your next step is. That way, when the interruption is gone, it's easier for you to slide back into what you were doing because you know what you were about to do next. The third type of distraction that we're gonna talk about today is the communication distraction. Email, Slack, text messages, the list can go on and on and on and on and on. And how can you start to limit that and reduce the amount of interruptions and distractions you're getting from those communication methods? Well, the first thing is turn them off. You do not need an email notification on your phone letting you know that you have email. While you're watching this video, you probably got three emails. You don't need it to ding and tell you that. You don't need the little thing sliding across the bottom saying you've got mail. So go ahead and turn those automatic notifications off. And then the second thing is decide when are you going to process all those communication channels? When are you going to keep them off? And then stick to that decision. Instead of having your email open to process all day long, all the time, go ahead and say, I'm gonna process email for two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon, the rest of the time is gonna be closed off. Or I'm gonna process email all day long, except for this two hour block. You can be proactive about how you wanna handle your communication. When do you wanna check it? How often do you wanna check it? And turn the notifications off. That will definitely start to limit those distractions. One of the challenges my clients face all the time is that when they're trying to limit distractions, especially those from people, they don't want their team members or even customers to feel underappreciated and undervalued. There's that balance between being effective and efficient and productive and being a kind human <laughs> and giving great customer service. And so how do you balance those two things? One of the ways that you can do that is to assign a different point person every hour, someone else to answer questions from team members or someone else to be the point person for customers. That way, if it's important to you that the phone is answered every time a customer calls, then assign different people to answer that phone so that everyone gets a chance to work uninterrupted. And also you're balancing the need to also be responsive to your clients. If you're a one person shop and you want to be responsive to them, but you also need to get your work done, go ahead and set up those boundaries and expectations early. Let them know that from eight to 10, you'll be working on their project and you're happy to return calls after 10 or whatever the boundaries may be. Once you are able to communicate those out, people follow them so much easier. They just need to know what the boundaries are. Here are three strategies to help you create a supportive work environment that promotes productivity. One, make sure that your team knows their zone of genius. Like what are the things they're uniquely skilled at, they love to do, and that helps move your business forward. And make sure that there's a match on the tasks they're doing with their zone of genius. When you're doing work that you really enjoy and that's easy for you, it's easier to get in the zone and stay in there. And it's a lot harder to be distracted by just random things happening around you because you're doing things you love. Secondly, have really clear expectations around what's an emergency in your business and how are we going to communicate that emergency? Being interrupted by people's and being distracted by email and text, a lot of that happens because we wanna make sure that we don't miss anything, that we are responsive to whatever is most important. And if you can clearly identify to your team 
These are the things that constitute an emergency. And in an emergency, we are going to contact each other this way. I had a client once tell me, well, I have to stay in my email all the time because, you know, what if we have a fire? Well, they are not going to contact you by email if there's a fire. So how will they? And that's a really extreme example. And in everyone's business, there are things that are emergencies. Well, how are you going to talk about those amongst each other? That's the communication channel that needs to be monitored more often. Everything else can, those can be just checked in on a couple times each day. Another strategy that help you make sure that you're creating a supportive work environment is to understand each other's personalities and work styles. A great product to use for this is Everything Disc. This really helps you understand, here's how I work best. Here's what I prioritize in the workplace. Here's how I communicate best. And not just about you, but about all the people on your team. Once you have that understanding of them and they have that understanding of each other, then you create an environment where everyone feels supported and valued. When it comes to tools and resources to help business owners reduce distractions and stay more productive, the key here is to first identify what is causing the distraction. Like what is that underlying thing? So we use the awe framework all the time. A is for awareness. W is for work, E is for evaluation. So when we're in the awareness stage, what's causing the disruption? Is it a distraction? Is it an interruption? Is it in my head? Is it someone internal? Is it technology? Like what is actually causing it? Once you're able to identify that, then you can find the appropriate tool or resource to help overcome that. A couple ideas are noise canceling headphones. Also finding a quiet place to work. I have a client who has his hidden away working location and one person in his company knows where that location is in case there were actually a reason that they needed to interrupt him, but only one person. So he will let her know I'm going here for the next 45 minutes, hour and a half, whatever the case may be. And she can contact him if needed, but no one else knows where he is. If you find that it's taking you a lot of discipline to stay out of your email during certain times, you can use an app that'll block you from going into your email during your most productive work times. And you can Google, there's a number of them out there, but you can use that app to keep you off of websites, to keep you out of your email. Um, it doesn't have to be forever, but at least it is makes it easier for you not to jump into your email. In closing, distractions are a fact of life for business owners. They typically fall in three different buckets. The ones that are happening in your own head, interruptions from other people, and then finally, technology distractions, email, Slack messages, etc. Once you can identify what the actual challenge is, then you can create the strategy around helping to eliminate it. So you want to walk through that AWE awareness work and evaluation process to help limit distractions. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope that you found a ton of value. If so, click the thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe. In a moment, you'll get a bunch of other videos popping up on the screen. Go ahead and watch some of those too.